Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at working with 3D prints in SketchUp. So we've already done videos, live streams, all kinds of stuff, even wrote a book on using SketchUp for 3D printing. What I want to do with this particular video was just a, a simplified version of taking a 3D print that already exists, maybe getting it from a, a service that offers 3D print files, paid or free ones, or even something off 3D warehouse that's marked as being 3D printable, importing to SketchUp, and then how to work with that, that file. So we're not gonna go deep into everything we need to talk about for 3D printing by any means, but working with 3D printable files inside of SketchUp and how that happens. So let's take a look at doing that right now. All right, so first thing we need is a 3D print file. So I have a couple that we're gonna work with. The first one is this one, I'm gonna drop it in here. This is a phone charging dock. Um, so I'm gonna import it. When you import STL files, which is what this is, because it was downloaded, ready to print, it's a print ready file, uh, it's gonna ask you what units are you importing. So I'm gonna import millimeters. Um, there's some other stuff in here about merging coplanar. Um, I'm gonna not bring in, I'm not gonna click merge coplanar this time. We'll bring in a second one and I'll try to remember to do it for that. But I just wanna show you what happens when you import an STL file as it is. The other thing is swapping X, Y coordinates. Uh, sometimes STL files are basically <laughs> upright or facing forward and this will swap them. I, I, I've never messed that. Rotate such an easy tool to use. I never mess with it. So uh, I am importing in millimeters, which is what a lot of STL files are saved as. So I'm gonna click okay. And then there we go, there it is. There, you can see it's about the right size. It's a, it's, it just, it holds a phone. It's just a little, little cradle here for a phone on the bottom. This is how an STL file will come in. STL files are triangulated. So that's saying that every face that would be just a normal flat face is cut into triangles. So you can see here, this, this rectangle right here is a perfect example. It's just a rectangle, but because STL files are triangulated, it's cut across. So a smaller geometry like this uh, arc right here, each of those edges then is connected back to a separate vertice. So uh, you get everything triangulated. There's really nothing wrong with this. I mean, you could take this as it is, work with it, and then export it. Everything would be fine. Um, or you could come in here, triple click, and use soft and smooth edges to get rid of them, of the, of the extra lines. Or what I would recommend, again, remember there's that option to merge coplanar that would help with this too. But I do want to, since we're in a beyond desktop, we talk more than just desktop commands, I do want to plug an extension, and that extension is cleanup. So in cleanup, I have the ability to do stuff like merge edges and erase straight edges, or I can hit clean right here. And what clean is gonna do is just run this geometry through a whole bunch of filters and clean up stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, yep, give it all to me, do it, clean it up. And you can see right there, I don't know why that pops up. Um, there we go, edges reduced, purged, cleaned up. Okay, if I look at this, yeah, that looks great. Got rid of a lot of stuff. It didn't, it didn't soften and smooth anything, so uh, you can see that I do still have those pieces. So I could come in here, triple click to select everything and then toggle so soft and smooth on and off again. And then that looks good. Cool. So at this point, I haven't done anything to this geometry. If I export this as an STL right now, it's the exact same thing I just pulled in. So there's really no point at, at this point, I've done nothing, but I wanna go a little bit further. I wanna take this, I wanna add another 3D print to it so that I have uh, a better charging dock. So I'm gonna do that by importing um, an STL file of a Rhino head I modeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in. I'm gonna drop it right here. Where did I drop that? I didn't drop that right here. Here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and import it. This time we'll hit merge coplay interfaces um, and then we'll click okay and import that. There we go. All right, so you can see this is a much more organic shape, so I have a lot of faces. I hit merge coplanar, but I still have all these because these triangles are not coplanar. They're they're all at an angle to one another. This face back here, though, this is a big flat face, this got 
cleaned up because this would have originally in the STL been cut all up to make it into triangles. So that's kind of what, uh, that's what Merchical Planner does, where it can, you can also see on the face too, there's some spots that aren't triangles. Here's a four-sided piece, here's a four-sided piece, um, because some of those were coplanar and that, that cleaned them up. But uh, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna select all of this and toggle soft and smooth on this also. And then we're gonna take that and let's start by getting it to the right scale. So we're gonna hit scale and bring this down. There we go, something like something like that. Uh, that looks that looks kind of fun. Um, and what I want to do is I want to actually put this uh, sticking out the front of the charger, right? Because rhinos charge things. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to make our put a, a rhino head on the front of our charger. So I'm going to do that by whoa, whoa! I zoomed a little crazy there. Uh, that's what happens when I try to use my. I'm so used to my 3D mouse. I, I try to use the regular orbit, and that's what happened. So what I'm going to do is find this lower point right here. I'm going to grab that point and I'm going to slide that down and have it connect to the front of this piece. And then I'm going to go from that same spot and I'm going to use rotate to rotate the top so that it is in plane with this piece right here. <laughs> it's already looking pretty good. All right. I need to, I need to scale that down a little bit more because, uh, uh, it's still it's still kind of big. So I'm going to start scaling it this way. If I just scale this way, of course, it's going to mash it. So I'm going to hold down sh here, hold down shift, and that's going to uniformly scale it. There we go. I'm going to get that like that. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. And I'm going to bring it down like that. Maybe go a little bit higher. So make sure you get, get his whole head off the off the ground. And then uh, maybe we can we can line it up too. So I can grab by the tip of the horn and then line that up with the very middle here. There we go. So I got two pieces lined up. Now I got to get these. Obviously, I don't want to export as two pieces. I'm gonna print this all at once. So I could do a couple things. One thing I could do is I could grab both of these and just make a new group. Some slicers will take this geometry and see it as one solid piece, and we'll be good to go. They'll just take this. It'll 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 slice just like it was one piece. Uh, some slicers will see this as two separate pieces and tell you that you have not a solid, you need to work with that. Um, it really depends on the slicer you have. What I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to grab both these pieces. This is experimenting, by the way. I don't know if this is going to work. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go to tools and I'm just going to say outer shell. Give me the outer shell of these two pieces. Uh oh, something's not solid. Let's see, I think this guy probably, nope, that's solid. This piece is not solid. So. I imported this. I either poked at something, messed up something, or I imported a, uh, a file that was not actually solid. I don't like to look at this extra piece right here. That may have been it. Let's see. We'll close that back up. Now is it a solid? So again, we're in Beyond Desktop. So one of the, the main tools I always recommend, main extensions I always tell people to use for 3D printing, of course, is solid inspector so if we run solid inspector on it it comes up and tells us we have surface borders which means there's spots where there's holes in the mesh so yep there they are okay so there's one there there's one here sometimes when you see these oh there's another one there when you see these issues you can just say fix all but that usually does that doesn't work on this particular error what i'm gonna have to do is double click and come in here and i'm gonna draw a couple edges to close up these holes in the mesh. Pretty easy, pretty quick fix. Um, but because of the way solid tools works, any holes like this have to be repaired before I can go in and I'm not sure what the problem is there. Let's just leave that, draw that, there we go. And then let's run solid inspector one more time. Oops, I slipped. Solid inspector. We saw oh, we have one more. Let's rotate around. Let's see if I can find the little red line. If I can't find it, I can hit the tab button or the tab key, and that will highlight a little or place a little circle around the, the error, and that makes it easier to find. All right, so we zoom in there. Oh yeah, there's a cut right there. That's not gonna work, so let's let's clean that up too. That I think was a function of cleaning up the model. There we go. 
So now that should be solid, perfect. All right, let's grab both of these and try that again. Tools, solid tool, or no, let's just do outer shell. So there we go. Now we have a new solid with a charging Rhino. Oh man. I hope somebody makes this and, and prints it because a charging Rhino is just, it's too good. So there you go. We had two STL files brought in, combined together, and now have a new solid ready to export. So like I said, not the comprehensive how to 3D print with SketchUp. Um, I said videos and books exist. This was more just like, how do I take two pieces, use SketchUp to put them together? Really, it comes down to using solid tools and importing. There are extensions that make importing STL files into SketchUp easier. Things we, We've done some videos on Skimp. Uh, Transmuter is another one that will import geometry, clean it up, um, also simplify it if necessary, make less less pieces on there. I didn't want to do a video just on those because we've done those before. But uh, this is the idea was taking a couple of print ready files, combining them together and then making a new print ready file. And uh, there you go. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Uh, did you like that workflow? Have you done something similar? Do you have a better way of doing it? Or do you have an idea of what you think would make a good video on our channel? Let us know down in the comments because we like making these videos, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.